Hello everyone, I'm Caroline Murphy Bennis. I'm the author and illustrator of the Rainbow Warrior children's book. And as part of the children's book um, and the Rainbow Warrior world that I have online, we have a newsletter and the newsletter is called A Question of Truth. Within this, I like to highlight um, companies that are, are, are based around ethical design thinking. And that can be to do with um, anything that is holistic and that's protecting and enriching of our planet, whether it's people or um, the environment. Um, so today we have um, Atlantic Aromatics uh, to, as a spotlight feature for our December issue. And I'm really thrilled that Ellen has uh, come here to have a little chat with us and to explain to us all about the beautiful products that they have to offer and um, the nucleus of the idea that uh, came to the founder David Kelly in the initial stages of the, the uh, coming together of this beautiful um, business that they're running at the moment since 1985 I think it was um, and uh, the range of products that they have, the markets that they are actually um, serving both nationally and internationally, and uh, the farmers and the people that they are, they um, get their essential oils from around globally around the world. So, um, Ellen, it's lovely to meet you, and Hi, I'm Caroline. taking time out of your busy Christmas um, uh, market <laughs> to to speak to us. And um, I'd love to hear about I suppose to start off with to you're an aromatherapist yourself as well aren't you and, I'm a uh, professional yeah, clinical uh, aromatherapist yeah okay and um, maybe you could just maybe uh, introduce us to the the company and to where the idea came from initially with David um, and his wife Anya isn't that right and, okay. and then maybe how you came to to work in the company that would be lovely Oh, hi, Caroline. It's lovely to meet you. It's our first time face to face. <laughs> and so thank you for having me on and your curiosity about Atlantic Aromatics. So yes, they, the concept was 1984. And um, in David and Anya had a health food shop in Mayo, or they began a health food store. And um, yeah, David was also selling organic herbs at the time to high end restaurants. So I suppose that market, um, organic herbs would have been considered quite high end in 1984. Yeah. And they would have had a connection to growers and um, he became interested in essential oils. I think his fascination um, realizing that different lavenders smelt differently. Okay. And pretty much that's where the journey began. And the organic Appalachian origin protege certification that our lavender has they're they're the same family farm in Haute Provence that have been supplying us since oh, wow. 1984. Well that's a, great, they, a nice long established connection that you've had. It's a really nice long established connection and they began in 1916 so I think they are six generations of lavender farmers um, and there's a nice little video on our website about that farm which I think gives people yeah. People don't tend to think of tractors and dirt and mud when they see a bottle of essential oil. It's true, actually, and I actually just finished watching that video, and it's beautiful. There's some gorgeous. There's four different um, videos there about the farmers mm -hmm. that have that you you um, source the the products from or the essential oils from. And mm -hmm. then, how did he move from that into the producing his own because it was he based in uh, initially I was wondering so how um, if they're based in Bray where are they called Atlantic Aromatics and then I realized when I did my research that yeah. it was first on the west of Ireland is that right yeah they, they the concept was created in Ballina okay. in County Mayo See. And that's where you're talking to me from County Mayo now. So we did oh. a bit of a switch around. Yeah. Oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, east to west, east to west. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. We've got a thing going with that. So they, yes, they moved to, um, they worked from home when they started, when they moved back to the East Coast. Um, and I started with them in 1994. So I'm 26 years with them. Oh, oh. Year. Lovely. Yeah. The yeah. part of the family at this stage. <laughs> yeah, the, all the family have worked in the business and um, 
his daughter, I was laughing with his daughter on the phone. Um, she's an operations manager. And she, um, I said I was there 26 years. And she was like, what? I said, <laughs> how, how old does that make you when I started writing? She said, 11. Wow. Uh, and the youngest was in a pram. We often had to run out between bottling to oh, brilliant. have a little shake in the garden. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And then they started um, to, you know, notice that the, the different qualities of the lavender, you said, and then they started to blend their own. Is that how the massage oils and um, the other products kind of came out of that? Yeah, they came along um, a good while later. Um, so the focus was just on pure essential oils and building relationships. Um, with our suppliers, a lot of them been small farmers, small growers, but of course, a lot of oils like spice oils this time of the year, if we think of cinnamon, clove, ginger, they don't grow in Europe, or if they did, they mightn't produce very high quality oil or a, an oil with the efficacy that you want from a therapeutic point of view. Yeah. So when you have to go further afield, like spice oils, we associate them with Asia, Madagascar, uh, you really need to build trust and have a foundation of trust because it's so far away. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's difficult. It's not like France that you can go and visit. Yeah. So in that case, um, we work with one or two co-ops. They would be based in maybe France who took an interest in places like Madagascar. And there comes in the organic. People who tend to be farming organically tend to feel a connection with the land. Yes. tend to feel a strong stewardship of the land mm -hmm. and also a lot of the time the people who are working and farming that land so you have different certifications like fair trade fair for life um different ones mm -hmm. our main certification is organic because it starts to get very costly to get every single certification over and over okay um so some companies if you're buying and they are certified and they're country of origin your that the criteria will transfer to us here which is super I and mean, it lessens the expense for a small company there's only with all the increase in paperwork um there's only so many boxes you can tick off but again when you have the, the longevity of the relationships um and i think as i say for us the organic in terms of here, we get inspected every year for that certification to be renewed. Okay, so it's renewed every year. Okay, so the standards are yeah. kept very high. Yes. And yeah. how did David um, um, establish those connections initially? Because I see, you know, it went as far as the Congo is in one of the, the videos, and you've got New South Wales, and, you know, it's very far, <laughs> far afield to find these special oils you know they're really precious I think <laughs> when I, after using them during the week and I, and, and I you know I really enjoyed them and everything and we'll talk a bit more about that as we go along mm -hmm. but I mean when I when I was sitting this morning now looking through the videos I thought to myself wow you know these are really special products they've come yeah. from such um such a a unique um environment to produce something so unique and mm -hmm. the care and the stewardship of the mm -hmm. land um, and the, the delicacy of which they use, they kind of harvest these, um, these products, this essential oil is just amazing. And, you know, even, you know, it, it seems to me very challenging to be um, a farmer that's not using pesticides and that's not using something that's harsh on the environment. You know, you can see how difficult it is for them to keep that standard high. And yeah. it, it's only through kind of a heart-centered approach to that stewardship that those kind of, those kind of um, products can be created, you know? And then yeah. I suppose your um, interest in that also has kind of drawn you to these people, which is a beautiful connection. So you're connected on the same vein of this kind of stewardship to the land. And, you know, that that's what I'm kind of interested in as well. And, you know, how can we be innovative around, um, harnessing nature rather than harvesting which is where mm. we have to go you know there's mm -hmm. we'll kind of come to the end of this uh, you know harvesting 
nature for, for our own good. We know we have to be steward to, stewards of that and to produce products that are in line with nature and working in tandem with it. Mm. And, and because they are, he it, it's also, you know, it's healing to us to use the products if we can get the maximum out of the nature and the closeness to nature when they're being produced. So like mm. it's like this natural cycle that if we can get that awareness into people's mind that, and I think that's why, you know, I started these interviews where I think with, with the fact that things have slowed down now with COVID that maybe we've got a, a chance to stand still and really to think a little bit more, you know, intelligently about the whole uh, process of how we use products in our environment, in our day-to-day -day living, how are we, you know, just, just to slow down and think more deeply about that relationship to ourselves, to, to our community and um, to the world at large. Uh, even when we're living in Ireland, how are we affecting people and farms and other, you know, villages across the, the globe? You know, we have a real responsibility to that, you know, and I think your company is really kind of meeting that, you know, and that's why I'm handpicking people who are, I feel that are really standing up to this, you know, and they're standing up and, and you've been, it's been, you know, been committed to it, to, to it for, for years, you know, so, you know, it's, you know, kind of um, a great, um, you know, North Star as such for those type of um, philosophies around uh, innovation, you know, so, you know, mm. Congratulations on that. I think it's fantastic, you know, and well, there's a, a great team behind the yeah. scenes working. Um, You're all almost committed to the same, you know, initiative. But yeah, everybody has their expertise. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and on, the, on the supply, how was the how did he initially get, you know, connected with these, these particular farms? Was it through research? Or did he go to, to travel to, to, to the farms himself or, you know, as a team, um, how, how is that um, established in Italy? Yeah, I think, um, you know, birds of a feather, like-minded people, there's an attraction there. And, you know, once you've discovered one farm, like the lavender farm, the Fraz in Haute Provence, you may get an introduction to a neighbor or you would tend to have areas dedicated to I mean, that Haute Provence would be one of the biggest organic growing sectors in, in France, although it's probably grown like the organic se sector everywhere. Um, I mentioned um, when you go further afield, we have a number of companies, um, some in France, and they got involved with spice oils and took an interest, decided to invest in the countries such as Madagascar and um, machinery whilst growing plants is one thing and farming essential oil machinery is extremely costly okay. so you'll nearly always need an investment when you're in poor more impoverished countries okay. and as I say with the organic there's often a, a sense of wanting to give back into that area mm -hmm. um, so whether it could be water treatment um, places like Madagascar, you know, banking doesn't really exist. It's very hard to get people money if they're 500 miles up a dirt track. Okay. And paying cash isn't maybe a good idea if you want the money to get to the women who've done the work. So there's, there's just so many layers. So those companies have been a huge asset. Um, the, the two in France, we have another one in um, Belgium. They have a lot of interests out of Nepal and India. And um, so those relationships with the people who are close to us in Europe, okay. they're very important. So we actually haven't been to the Congo, okay. although I think it would be when I'm daydreaming. Think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely a daydream uh, now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us. Um, but you know, the, that that supply chain is very short. It's, it's us to the French company to Madagascar. So, yeah. and the, the man that you saw in the in the film who'd left during the civil war yeah. um so yeah we, we would go to um trade shows where we we meet suppliers and then maybe that might be followed up with a visit mm -hmm. um so it's uh yeah maybe you'll have to get david back on for an in deep in depth uh yeah we'll have another interview uh, i think definitely <laughs> trotting um 
that yeah his his travels behind it and actually he, he does a lovely job of narrating it was David on one of them wasn't it uh, on the videos yeah yeah and the yeah. Provence the, the the video about Provence and um, yeah so I, I actually had the pleasure of using your your products this week and you sent me some gorgeous ones uh, especially for Christmas which I thought were beautiful the frankincense uh blend that that's the uh, the massage oil mm -hmm. and um we've got the winter magic which i've actually have here burning beside me in uh, a little burner nice. very <laughs> nice caroline we've very a, <laughs> yeah we've had a gorgeous uh winter magic scent all around the house um they're they're really gorgeous i you know ideas for presents you know for christmas and um, then I've unusually, <laughs> I, I had started a course eight weeks ago on Ayurveda and mm -hmm. Ayurveda Centre in, in Ireland had uh, a free course and um, some of it was to do with massage and self-massage and self-care and all that kind of stuff. So I thought it was a brilliant idea to try and use some of your products along with that as well. So the two things came in beautifully together, you know, and uh, so um, could you just talk a little bit about the uh, medicinal um, properties of, you know, say the, just for some, for people who, like myself, actually, I, I'm not really somebody who goes for massage or, or has done this kind of self-massage before. And, the, you know, researching your, your website, I can see how, you know, there's such a, a healing, pro you know, I know it's relaxing, but it's also just healing properties um, to the essential oils. And, you know, could you just talk a little bit about, uh, about the benefits of those, those massage oils? I suppose massage is a time-honoured um, practice. It comes in many different shapes and forms. Um, just your basic of applying a, an oil to the body, you're, you're increasing um, blood flow, you're assisting the lymph. We know the lymph is very responsible for keeping our, our bodies ticking, keeping our bodies detoxed. It doesn't have a pump on its own, so it does rely on movement um just the absorbing of the oils through the skin and um, it has a direct effect on the texture of the skin the health of the skin but also in terms of um just a wellness we know that all kinds of increase in of circulation is going to be additional to good health um there's a sense of touch that mm -hmm. can be can be very important whether as one um, practitioner said to me recently, we're not hugging. So it, it, yeah. if you live by yourself or you're not in a family or you might be married and, um, you know, even giving yourself the odd little squeeze, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's a, a natural, a natural thing. Um, so the, the essential oils all have different properties. Uh, you'd nod off to sleep if I started saying yeah. this is good that this is good for that. Yeah. You mentioned the frankincense massage yeah. oil. Yeah. So um, frankincense would have an association with uh, a spiritual association. It's often used in ceremonies. Um, it would be a great heart oil, really good emollient moisturizing oil for the skin, for more mature skin, for dry skin types. Mm -hmm. There's also chamomile and bay laurel. Mm -hmm. And these were created by Atlantic Aromatics in Ireland. Um, in association with um, one of the leading schools of aromatherapy, OBUS, OBUS, they're based in Dublin, and they are in cold pressed, unrefined vegetable oil. Okay. Um, and there's no additives or preservatives or alcohol. Okay. So, in a commercial way, um, the sense they have a relatively short shelf life, Caroline, okay. but that's because we don't want the preservatives. Yes. And we don't want a refined vegetable oil. When we use an unrefined vegetable oil, it has all of the vitamins and omegas, which is helping to feed our skin. Yes. Once an oil is refined, all of those things are generally lost from the product. Mm -hmm. So you can't, we can't have our cake in it eaten. We know. can't have a product sitting in the bathroom for six years and expect it to be natural. Exactly. But it, it lasts for about six months. Is that right? Six months, six months to a year. So a life year. Yeah. and heat are the enemy of vegetable oils and essential oils. 
So keep them, don't put them on a sunny window ledge. Okay. Uh, keep them in a cupboard or maybe in a, buy yourself a nice box to keep your oils. So you'll see it been said, keep them in the fridge. Ireland really doesn't tend to have temperatures um, necessary to, but if you're, if they were under a Velux window, it, it's going to get warm in the oh. summers. Yeah, so just like in a press, just with the door closed, and, and so dark. Yeah, it's about yeah. your little go-to yeah. self care box. You could, yeah. you know. And if you're, I think if you're in a practice of, you know, doing those uh, self massages, I think you probably go through them pretty quickly anyway, you know, because it seems more. I was trying it during the week, and uh, you know, just you need quite a bit to to um, cover the the whole body. We'll say, you know, and I think if you got into a, a practice of it, you know, I don't think you have to worry about it too much. Sunny, I suppose if you got to cover a present, sometimes we have that, we have that. Um, you know, thing about like like candles. You know, you, you leave a bottle up there for a year, and just because you like the look of it, and then you forget to use it. You know, so I think it's a great time for people to just say, no, I think it's time to use these things. You know, and just to well, it's, kind of it's like buying the you know, yourself. The you know, when we can't do anything else, or buying the detox product and saying, well, there's that's that that's the detox done. Exactly. Or, yeah, <laughs> it's up there in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. The, the big and, bowl of fruit and the big bowl of fruit isn't getting eaten. Exactly. But Caroline, can I just add, did you get the unboxed frankincense? I did, yes. Uh, so um we have yeah. recently just um done a uh, unpackaging contrary to other companies. Yeah, yeah. And we have got rid of the boxes okay, and we have funked up the labels. Okay. And um, so this is cutting down on waste. We've been yes. able to reduce the prices a little bit. And I don't know, I have a screenshot of the range. I'm not sure if it's possible to... If you could send it to me, I could put it into the, in, onto the newsletter. Um, um, yeah, yeah. so they're really bright, funky, cheerful labels. Oh, brilliant. And they all retail at 9.95, except for the frankincense, which is 13.95, and the neroli, which is a blend for pregnancy and stretch marks it is 1850. okay brilliant so, so this is brand new to the yeah so i'm, I'm sorry i you got uh, you got a bottle of the new new labels before i did oh fantastic okay so this is a reveal then okay <laughs> exactly it's a, people have so much going on at the moment we just did a soft lunch launch and uh, we'll make a bit, a bit of a fuss about them in the new year because i think it's quite timely to be getting rid of yeah, and I see a lot of people were doing the kind of the unboxing with all, the, you know, the brown paper boxes with the brown um, packing, you know, the kind of uh, paper packing, which is lovely to see as well, you know, because it's like that. And there's a chance. Guys, you just can tie a little bow around them. Yeah, exactly. You don't, there's no need for them. They're, they're, they're very robust, the bottles as well, aren't they? You know, they're quite thick um, glass. Yeah which, you know, they're, they're, they don't need a lot of packing, you know. Um, and for myself, I bought, and I know I'm actually aware of your products for years. I mean, they, they're very much part of any, um, you know, health food shop when you go in, you know, they've got a great presence and uh, it's lovely to get a chance to, to chat to you now. But um, I had purchased mine in the local Nourish and, uh, but I know that you also are, your, your supply, wholesale as well is that correct to to to, to um aromatherapy or spas or do you yeah our, our yeah. main business we are blessed with a very vibrant health food industry in ireland we really are and i've been blessed for best part of 22 years to be traveling every corner of ireland to visit there's so many dedicated independent irish health stores yeah. Um, they're a treasure trove and I'm such a nerd if I'm on holidays I have to go in yeah. to the local health store even though I know I'll probably meet um, an owner or a manager yeah. who wants that <laughs> same when I'm abroad I always have to seek out the local health store and see what they have yeah. um, so Ireland would be yeah our, our, our dedicated loyal customers um, and in turn their customers we have a number of stores in the UK okay um, we have a lovely store that we supply in Germany Mm -hmm. uh, Singapore mm -hmm. and then we do supply some um, practitioners in Japan oh wow so they either find you um, we have attended a biannual conference it's a conference called Botanica and um, it couldn't happen this year but it was hosted its first year was hosted in Trinity College Dublin wow. uh, two years there then it went to Brighton University and uh, it had moved to Slovenia this year. So it's an international conference of 
um, medical herbalism and clinical aromatherapy, where you get speakers from all over the world working on oncology, um, wound care, you know, burn units, uh, palliative care. And so aromatherapists would come from all over the world to attend those lectures. Okay. And there would be a trade show as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. Ne network, you know. It's, it's lovely. It's yeah, a really nice. Yeah, that's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. And I know that uh, you sent me in our initial um, conversation or, or meeting online, um, the, you've won an award for the Rose Hip. Is that right? It was voted Best Body Care Award for 2020 by the Irish retailers. So that was really, Excellent. as a grassroots award, um, we're very honored. I don't know if you're aware, I, I have only been made aware in the last 10 years, a lot of awards, you have to pay a lot of money yes. to enter them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just not part of our culture. Um, we don't have those type of deep pockets. Yeah. So uh, to get a genuine award like this that we didn't have to pay to enter was really... That's amazing. It, me it, it means more nearly, doesn't it? You know, yeah. It does, yeah. And it's a beautiful yeah. product. I mean, yeah. it, whilst people will recognise um, a lot of what we sell as cosmetic ingredients, they're not cosmetics insofar as we we're not formulating cosmetics, which, which is a whole specialty. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's a bit like by analogy you would be buying a chicken korma in a jar it's nothing wrong with it yes uh, or you go in and you buy the 12 spices and you buy the coconut milk or whatever other ingredients and yeah. you make it yourself it, they're two different things yeah. so um this rosehip seed is a cold low temperature uh, extract which keeps all your carotenoids and your transretinoic acid and your omegas um there's nothing done to it it's extracted, yeah. sent to us, we bottle it. Wow. Um, so uh, that's why we can sell it at 10.50 for a 20 ml bottle. Yeah, yeah. Um, and tell me about, you know, the uses of it, because I was particularly interested in it myself for, you know, it, you know your skin, your, um, you know, I've got kind of some uh, very much Irish skin, fair, and it, you know, it, it can flare up and it doesn't like heat, it doesn't like cold, it doesn't, it doesn't like much, you know? So there's a yeah. lot of kind of, redness and stuff in my skin and uh, so I was interested I was really interested in this and how you advise people for you know Irish skin and maturing skin and um, mm -hmm. would that is it something that you use once a day twice a day under your moisturizer you know how is I suppose it everybody's different yeah um, and I think Irish skin um, defies um, all kinds of expertise <laughs> yeah you go into 10 shops and come out with 10 products products and not be able to wear any of them. I know, um, yeah, yeah. I think you just described my skin perfectly there. <laughs> so um, I, it, it is quite an orange colour. Yeah. But that is our carotenoids, which is, you know, what's naturally feeding the skin. Yeah. So putting it on at night, you may stain your pillowcases. Okay. So I prefer to put it on straight after a shower okay. and then I tend to pat it off gently because you, if, you, if you're getting dressed and moving quickly in the morning and then if you want to put on a tinted moisturizer or your foundation over that a lot of mar makeup artists say they really like it because it evens out the, the yeah. orange pigment evens out the skin tone now you're it's not going to permanently stain the skin but some people can get a bit of a surprise when they see how orange it I didn't is. notice that myself I, mean, I knew it when I put it out but I didn't see it in my skin because I even though I have fair skin it's kind of yes. darker than normal it's so unusual yeah. between my mother and my father you know she's dark and my dad's fair so it's kind of a bit of both but yeah. um and would you put a moisturizer over it or just on its own you don't need a moisturizer you with could it. put a tinted moisturizer over yeah. that or foundation or or nothing yeah. at all i've i send it out by the truckload to um some friends in austria and she has all her friends converted and they have lovely Mediterranean type skin. Um, oh, gorgeous, yeah. Have, no, have, no, have, no, have, no, uh, yeah, and so she loves it. She doesn't wear any makeup. She just uses the rose hip. But she could have a lovely glow to your skin if you had darker skin as well, you know. Um, yeah, and I 
think with our central heating and the cold weather, it's really tough. And this makes um, a really good food for your skin. So, yeah. yeah. Beautiful and lovely present for somebody as well, you know, because, mm. you know, we often don't go in and treat ourselves to things like that. And I think it would be a lovely gift for, you know, sister, sister-in-law or, you know, good friend. Um, and another product, one of your products that I was using, I actually loved the, the multi-use of this lemon myrtle oil that mm. you had suggested with it on your website, different uses. So... On the last interview I had done with uh, Pam Free, um, Pam Free, mm -hmm. I was talking about the sponges that I just have a thing aversion to, and you had said to maybe put a little bit onto the sponge or onto the cloth that you use, and I just, it's fantastic. Uh, I mean, this even the scent around the the basin area, it, it has changed completely, and I used it within the the fridge as well. So you maybe could mm -hmm. put a tiny bit on the cloth and clean out the fridge, in the car, and all these different areas, and it just gives you such a lovely aroma and so light and kind of um, fresh freshening. You know, it kind of it's brings not it. Not cloying, like yeah. some of the synthetic aromas. What I might add is light. You know, mm -hmm. it's not being light. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and most people are, are attracted to, um, I call them my uh, sunshine soldiers, so your, all of your citrus oils, um, lemon, orange, mandarin, bergamot, especially at this time of the year, they take um, bucket loads of sunshine to produce them. So it's, I think they give a lot in our climate. Um, the lemon myrtle isn't, of course, a citrus, but it does smell quite lemony and citrusy. Yeah. And yeah. just to be mindful, um, in terms of your skin essential oils can cause irritation okay so using them i would wear rubber gloves like that in the kitchen okay um, and they can also uh, degrade certain materials okay so just to be mindful of you know i wouldn't be um lashing them in in places where there's plastic you know so yeah just just to be aware yeah where that is a little bit of an acidity in it maybe yes some people irish people can have really sensitive skin on their like hands we said, yeah. <laughs> and all this hand washing as well yeah. yeah exactly okay beautiful and uh, i'm just seeing what else we have the rose water you know in the last issue my daughter lauren she tried and tested your rose water i was trying to get her uh, interested in some natural products you know because um she she loves you know anything that's um any you know all the the um cosmetics and you know moisturizer and stuff she's got in she's 15 and she's after getting really into it, all that kind of thing so she uh, could you she loved the product she thought it was beautiful and actually i didn't realize as well she was saying you could you spray it on your pillow at night that's another Good. use for it yeah so she had kind of known about this which i <laughs> I'm really learning a lot from these interviews and these products. And and how um, would you advise people using your waters? Because that's another product that you have available. Yeah, that rose water floral is waters, from... They? Um, hmm? They're floral waters, you call them. Floral waters. So they yeah. generally are a byproduct of distillation of the essential oil. However, this farm, this family farm, has specialised in rose in Bulgaria. Um, oh, I think there are three generations. And... That rose water isn't a byproduct, so they don't take any rose oil off it. And the end product means it's it's quite high in rose oil, and that acts as a preservative. Oh. So it's preservative free. Most rose oils on the market are going to have to have some preservative of some kind because they're relatively unstable. They, they don't have a long shelf life. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that it's very high in um, rose oil. Um, used to, it can be used to freshen up. I would have a little small bottle in um, my back pocket in the car during the summer. Mm -hmm. Really lovely. You can just spritz away. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're a little ways away from <laughs> having to use it for the heat. Um, yeah. And can be used in, in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, can be yeah. used in skincare. Um, so before um, moisturising or after cleansing, yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. Another lovely little kind of gift for somebody as well, I think, you know, um, and a nice big bottle as well, lasts a long time, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. We have a, a travel size as well, it's okay. half that size, so that's handy for the summer months and maybe a holiday or two. <laughs> We have, to, we have to create these lovely experiences ourselves in our home now, you know, which is yeah. 
sure. we have to be creative, don't we? <laughs> and um, just on the, the design aspect of it, I was wondering about um, the, the logo and the, is it a seed or is it a bird? It's There's a bird. A, it's a bird, okay. And the, is there any significance to, to that? Um, and darting in the Atlantic aromatics, uh, in the Atl beside the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. I was just yeah. wondering, sometimes there's kind of symbol symbolism within logos. I was wondering, was there anything um, symbolic in the, in the bird? I think, it, <laughs> I'll have to check with David. I think it could be um, a dove. Oh but yeah, yeah. this one, one looks like children, me, yeah. <laughs> one of his children made reference when they were quite small to it being a seagull, much to his horror. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we'll go with the dove for now and I can get <laughs> like a dove to me, I yeah. can get put on, on the naughty step if I'm wrong and I'll let you know. Yeah, the dove on the choppy sea, that's what I saw, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but he's kind of yeah. yeah, he's a pioneering, you know, in this new in this uh, this field. Um mm. and that's wonderful. So and how are you finding um you know business since COVID hit you? Have you, you you know, is it very challenging at the moment? Or you've had very, you know, established companies, so maybe so. Yes, we've we've made we or David has made reference to thank goodness we are so well established yeah. during something like this. Um, we've been blessed because the health stores are able to remain open um, as essential services. So they have had a long couple of months. Uh, I know everybody's so grateful to have been in a position to be able to have kept working. Um, but there were so many dynamics to work around, and as most of our products are coming in from abroad. Um, that was one aspect, the, all the delays. Um, another aspect would be harvesting. Um, this year was particularly difficult for farms. They had to work around, you know, a large groups of people operating in very different ways. And some, you know, some crops, you can't say, oh, well, we'll wait another month and we'll harvest it then. Yeah, yeah. Too late crops. It's, it's, it's ready for harvest. It has to be distilled. You can't wait um and, and you know and there's a very tight season for 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 some crops so um yeah it's been a very very busy year yeah and as i say we're just so grateful for all our um our customers yeah. both retail and um suppliers yeah they've done a great job we're just finishing up at our 40 minutes now so I'll, mm -hmm. I'll say thank you very much um, for taking time out and I uh, wish you the very best um, for Christmas and going forward in into the, the new year and uh, you know it's a, a beautiful uh, company with some stunning products that I think everybody will enjoy and I think um, they're a great investment in your own self-care and um, you're supporting beautiful uh, enterprises across the world and communities and uh, farms um, that are sustainable and eco-friendly so it hits a lot of marks so um, I say thanks very much to you Ellen and uh, best of luck for Christmas and best of luck for the new year. Thanks, Caroline, and thanks for your interest and the best of luck with your book. Um, <laughs> and I believe you're doing some more writing. So uh, yes, that's right. I have a poetry book uh, on the way, so it's called well, uh, Declare Our Republic. So it'll it'll be uh, available on Amazon in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. So yeah, and well, I hope the essential oils and aromatics bring you um, lots of free freeness in your writing. Lots of inspiration. <laughs> they have already. Yeah. <laughs> thanks yeah, so much. Nice. Wishing you a lovely festive season, Caroline. Thank you, Ellen. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Take care. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye.